KRFF 95.9 LPFM. I see you hiding up there at the top of the hour. Moorhead Fargo, 701-478-4959, RadioFreeFargo.org. We're streaming there anywhere in the world. Uh, You can donate. I suggest that. Uh, Please do. You keep this groovy station cooking. Noon to 3, side stage with Trav. And then 4 to 5, automation. Actually, 3 to 4, automation. And then 4 to 5, Scanna Talk and D with Wilson. Then it's Stinky Arts Music Mart. And then Locals on the 8. Now, what is what's happening now? Well, we talk about cannabis. Talk about cannabis in a positive light. At 420, we open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And this Thursday is no different. However, um, I didn't promote it because last two times I promoted a guest, it didn't. You know, it didn't happen. So this time I didn't. But waiting in the wings, uh, I'm 99% sure that Representative Jason Doctor is going to be here via V phone to talk about his measure, House Bill 1420, or maybe it's Senate Bill 1440. 1420. See, I'm going to get messed up with that because politicians call it 2632, but since 420 is in their bill number, then, you know, so that's going to probably trip me up. But I'm a little I'm a little nervous, you know, so we're going to get pushing through here. Um, like always, this show is brought to you by Becky's Body Butter, Black Cottage Body Butter. This stuff is uh, insane and it takes care of your toe and foot fungus. It's got what you need right here. It's kosher, full spectrum CBD, North Dakota home, grown hemp. It's ND hemp seed oil, CBD mango butter, and a bunch of other stuff. You can uh, go, of course, to Black Cottage Alchemy online, or you can go to Odds Two Ends in West Fargo, and uh, Patty will take care of you. Or over here, Tochi Products, you can go get it there. And when you're in there, go ahead and sign the ND for Freedom of Cannabis Act petition. That's the constitutional amendment that uh, is currently being circulated. And so, again, we're going to have Representative Jason Doctor at 420. We're going to talk to him about his one 420 and uh, where that is. It's in the Senate now. We'll talk to him about all that and what he thinks the likelihood of, you know, getting cannabis legalized through the legislative system. We're going to talk to him about that at 420. Again, can of talk and deal with Wilson every Thursday at 4 o'clock I get in here. And then at 420, we open a bag of cannabis news. And however, we've got a call in guest. So I, I would say we got a jumped up show for you. So uh, if you're kind of curious about that, um, you know, the, uh, what would I say that? The a politician ran measure or no, a legislative measure? I don't know. But anything, anyway, the guys that are the politicians, they're pushing this measure. So I don't even know what that's called anymore. But anyway, He's the chief sponsor of his bill, so we're going to talk to him about it and how he, you know, just, well, let's talk to him about it. And so you guys will know right, right from the horse's mouth what's going on. And I and even, like, the timeline, like, when, when will it, you know, because I'm assuming, like, next week or so, or this week, I thought, the Senate would take care of it. But we'll talk to him. Now, however, uh, now I want to tell you about the homeless scenario you might find yourself in the new life center helps people who are homeless and hurting go from merely surviving to truly thriving their aim is to help people in need discover value and find hope the new life center has evolved into a multifaceted emergency and crisis service center to learn more about nlc visit their website at www.fargonlc.org or give them a call 701-235-4453 and again welcome everybody to my little show here in Fargo, Canna Talk ND with Wilson. We talk about cannabis in a positive light. You can go to Canna Talk ND on YouTube tomorrow, minus the music. You'll listen to me once again. And uh, this particular show, we will have a guest in that 420 segment, you know, about something that's relatable and happening right now in our world when it comes to cannabis legalization. So it's going to be neat to kind of find out, you know, what's going on in, in that world. And, how, and there is a Indy for Freedom of Cannabis Act. That's a petition being pushed around your area. If you want to get involved, do that. And if you want to pick up the uh, body butter, go sign a Tochi. And then pick up some uh, chia seeds while you're in there. And tell Joe Wilson said hi. All right. Oh, and you can go to Orange Records, too. Now, I think we better get to the song here of the show. But uh, anyway, Philip Canahead Pilko, he does a show on Sundays. Check that out. Oofda is what you say after that. Uncaged Zach Brown Band. That's 2012. And you're welcome. Can of talk, Indy, with Wilson. 
Every Thursday at 4 o'clock. I get in here at 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news, and this Thursday is no different. However, we're going to have Representative Jason Doctor in here. He's the main man, uh, chief sponsor of the legalization measure that's working its way through legislation. It's working its way through the whatever process. I don't know what that word is, but uh, it's made it through uh, the first committees. It's made it through the House, and now it's going to start going through the Senate committees, and then it'll be a full vote full Senate vote. So I'd say we're halfway there. We're halfway there. And he'll tell us more about what that even means. Um, I got a minute or two here to talk with you. I thought this would be something interesting to tell you. Uh, Marijuana moment. Mexico's Chamber of Deputies approves revised marijuana legalization bill, sending it back to Senate. Sending it back to Senate they are. I mean, these guys are the king of casually procrastinating, making something happen since 2000 stinking 18. But anyway, the Mexican Chamber of Deputies on Wednesday approved a bill to legalize marijuana nationwide, sending it back to the Senate with amendments. The Senate approved an initial version of the cannabis legislation late last year, and the Chamber of Deputies was expected to take it up sooner. But that process was uh, delayed due to complications, corona, blah, blah, blah. Now, two days after the Health and Justice Committee's amended and advanced the bill, lawmakers pass it on the floor in a 316-129 vote with 23 absent tensions, which... I don't know. I again, and I'll ask Jason too. Like, was is that a big? Well, I mean, three sixteen is that like a easy vote? You know, like theirs, it was like fifty eight to thirty for the uh, House vote on the House Bill one four twenty. So to me, that seems like close. It doesn't seem like you know cannabis took the took the win there. And but three sixteen to one twenty nine, that sounds like it it did. So while many legislators have personally advocated for the need to reform, it's also the case that these actions come in response to a Supreme Court mandate and the court deemed the prohibition on personal possession and cultivation of cannabis unconstitutional in a 2018 ruling and tasked lawmakers with enacting a policy change. And that's definitely what these guys have been stinking doing as they've been making policy changes just casually casual for the last three years now. But it looks like we might be about there. But anyway, let's get this music in. You're going to listen to this. And then when the music wraps up, Fool in the Rain, OAR, Robert Randolph, we're going to have Representative Jason Doctor in here. And we're going to, we're going to cut, the, cut the mustard when it comes to cannabis legalization and uh, what he's going to do to help us get that done. Here it comes. We'll see you in a bit. Fool in the Rain, OAR, Robert Randolph and the Family Band and Radio Free Fargo. 95.9 LPFM. Well, it's showtime. I got the man of the hour in on deck. We're going to play this, and then we'll have him on next time. Can I talk indeed with Wilson? Here we go. Yo, it's Wilson from Can I Talk ND. You know, the super awesome show you're getting ready to listen to. I think you should go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll wait. Okay, enjoy the show. All right, Can I Talk ND with Wilson. Hello, folks. We made it. RadioFreeFargo.org. We got a special guest with us here. Can you uh, hear me, Representative Jason Doctor? Yes, I can. Okay, fantastic. Well, thanks uh, for calling me. Uh, it's kind of ironic. I have a show every Thursday at 420 to talk about cannabis legalization and progress that's mostly made in the state. And your measure has actually got 420 in it. So that's kind of ironic. But now, do you say 1420 or do you say one? Four? See, I've been saying one 420, but. House Bill 1420. The bill. Okay. Now when it now it's heading into the Senate, right? Like does it is it called Senate bill now or does it stay House bill? No, it stays a House bill 1420. Oh. Okay. All right, cuz yeah, so I've been calling it House Bill 1420 because as you may or may not know 420 is kind of like a cannabis slang, you know, and, and a holiday. So, I don't know how those things get picked, you know, like you've got a measure it's for legalization of cannabis and 420 is kind of like its moniker that you would get that number in your house bill. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Because you don't get to pick the name, do you? Hello? Hello? Hey, you're, cutting out, you're cutting out on me, man. Hello? Hey, you there? Yep, sorry, we got cut off just for a second. All right. Yep. Okay, well, no problem. Um, at, at least it's your fault and not mine, you know, because I... Yeah. I could hit a wrong button. So anyway, so House Bill, okay, so now eastern part of the state, 
Um, I would say he's probably pretty pro cannabis. You know, like I, I got no issues. I think the easier and the soonest and the quickest we get it out to people that need it, the better. But then what I've read about you is you're not, you're not super pro into cannabis. Like, so how did you get suckered in to being like the chief sponsor of this legalization bill? That's a great question. Um, yeah, first, I, I've never, ha- I've never tried uh, marijuana in my life. But the reason, you know, um, well, one of the reasons why uh, people are pretty hesitant. It's a, it's a hot topic. Okay. And, but I felt putting the bill forward. I wanted to be proactive. I don't, I don't want it in the Constitution that, um, you know, adult use marijuana. I just, I, I just feel that the Constitution doesn't need that. Uh, language in the Constitution. And so that's why I brought the bill forward. I talked to several people before I put the bill in, and they looked at me and they said, why don't you put it in? And I said, you know, yeah, okay, I'll put it in. And, uh, you know, once South Dakota passed medical and um, adult use, right. and then Montana has something in, I, it's not a matter if, it's when it's going to come to the state of North Dakota. And, we, and I just wanted to see that we have some of our rules that we have with medical and make it, you know, some tighter restrictions, but also allow people who want to use adult use to have the opportunity to stay in North Dakota. Right, right. Yeah. And so I was thinking like, cause you know, there's people that are saying there's too many, you know, regulations on this one, you know, like uh, the government, of course, they're the ones who create the bill, you know, to sew up every possible, you know, revenue they can get, you know, like the ultimate control where they, you know, they say, well, if we can't have it constitutional, if we can't have homegrown expungement, well, then we don't want anything at all. And the way I see it is whoever, whoever gets up to the plate first, I'm going to throw the ball at you, you know, and if you can make it legal, because I, again, I, uh, I would like to use it more. I think it's very beneficial. So let's get that to the people. And then if we got to come up with some other stuff, you know, if we got to tweak it, then let's tweak it. But so I'm, I'm, I'm just happy that something's out there. So, so when it passes through the Senate, then Doug signs it, and then, then what? And then, and then there's provisions in the, in the bill that the health department um, would do the regulation just like they do with the medical. Okay. And they have, um, you know, they'll have at least six months to implement what they feel the program. Because uh, what the bill does is it, it says that only the manufacturing of medical can manufacture adult use. Okay. So we have two facilities in the state of North Dakota, which is in Bismarck and in Fargo. Right. And then it only can be sold in the licensed dispensaries that we currently have. And I believe there's eight in the state currently. Um, so they're not going to have a lot. I mean, they're not reinventing the wheel um, with medical right. being uh, rolled out, you know, uh, recently. So they have a lot to work with. Right. And so I don't see, you know, I would hopefully by... It, you know, by the first of the year, um, you know, soon after the first of the year next year, everything would be in place and, and, and running. But okay. there could be some snags and everything. But sure. uh, it, it should go a lot smoother than it did with the medical because it was such unknowns at that time Okay, now, the medical pass. All right. Now, the only question uh, that I hear about, uh, you know, just funneling them to the dispensaries, if there is an issue with uh, production, you know, and getting it to, you know, you'd want to get it you know, an ample product for the people who medically need it. Now, I would argue everybody can use it medically, and it's all being used medically. But I wouldn't want a recreational guy taking, say, a guy's inventory for medical use if they're all funneled to that. You know what I mean? If you send them all to the medical dispensary to get their product. Right. It, well, it, it also has in the bill um, that the health department has a discretion to uh, license more manufacturers and more dispensaries. Oh, okay. And, and and part of the reason why we had the limitations in this current bill is that the dispensaries, they put a lot of upfront money and costs in to providing medical. Okay. So we thought if we can get this bill passed for the first two years, you know, it'd be just the, the current dispensaries. And then next session, we would look at expanding that and allowing uh, more dispensaries throughout the state so people have more access. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. And to, that, you know, to marijuana. Okay. So that, that brings me to this kind of question too. Now, I don't know how to say this the great way. So I'm just going to say, um, what is like uh, legislators, why do they have such a problem with home grow? 
being able to grow. Because if a guy, see, here's the way I see it. I see a guy, he's in a smaller town, he may have a caretaker, but he certainly can't get into a dispensary anywhere, but he can benefit from it. Why he couldn't grow it outside next to his corn and not have to go into town? Like, what, why, why is there such a budding hedge with, you know, allowing people to grow it? But one of the major issues that, that I hear is that it will uh, more will be in the black market if you allow this, hmm. because the um, the language that they have in Secretary of State for the initiate measure that's going to be put on the ballot that each individual in the state of North Dakota can grow up to twelve plants, and that's the concern with some legislators that could really expand the black market. Huh. And uh, well. I- uh, you know, and, and you know, again, they're, they're, you know, in the legislature, we there's disagreements all the time, but that's one of the main reasons why people do not want to support, you know, growing right. Uh, well, and I can see it. plants at home. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Yeah, because if you can't see it, if you see it more as like, uh, you know, just is saturating a state where before you guys were like, well, we only have a certain amount of percentage of black market, and then we allowed them to grow it, and it's where like, you know, it's the jungle in here. You know, where it's, I forget that kind of idea because I see it more as benefiting somebody. Like, it's not a decline of the market. Like, you're not creating an area, you're not making it worse for wear. You know, if anything, you're making it more beneficial. But, but again, I'll take whatever because, again, I wanted to get it out to the people. And we can either do people-driven initiatives, and that's been tried. I've been a part of a few myself. And the, and that's the hardest way to do it. And if I can get somebody that's in the legislative process that can submit a bill and run it through, I mean, who who can complain with that? You know, I'll I'll thank you. I'll say, well, thanks, Jason, for allowing the people to get it anyway. You know, at least at least they can get something. You guys can work out the kinks and then change it as you go along. So you know, again, I I say bravo, and somebody had to do it anyway. And again, waiting on people is kind of like waiting on politicians too. You know, <laughs> so it's, yeah. so it's like just so something is is moving along. And again, it, it, home grow, it's not all or nothing. You're just saying right now, this is what we want to do and this is what we'll get behind. So I mean, I'm with it. Right. We, 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 I, I put a bill together that tight restrictions and had the best chance of passing. Right. Um, That's because- amazing. Being in the legislative process, I, I understand how it works and, and where you have a lot, where you have a better chance. And, and you know, people make comments, well, I would want this and this and this. I said, if we added that to the bill, it would have never passed in the House. Well, and that's uh, the thing. So now, 56 or 58, I forget, to uh, 32, is that a big margin for the win? Or was that a close margin? Uh, that's a fairly close, you know, I, uh, before I was a legislator, I was a lobbyist, and I was doing the nose count, and I had between 52 and 56, with 56 being a high. Um, you know, I mean, you need four, I believe, 47 to pass or 48 to pass. So we had eight, we had eight extra. So it's, God. I wouldn't say I was comfortable, but I was uh, going into the vote. I was cautiously optimistic. Right. Um, you just never know after floor debate if people change their minds either way. Um, yeah. How the vote was going to turn out, but well, it's so crazy uh, how those how volatile that stuff can be. How you guys can go in there and all of a sudden just a really cool speech will change the thing. Yes, I mean someone, someone, I, you know, I, I thought well, someone could get up and give their experience of uh, of having a child that had major drug issues, right, and, and then know the effects. You know, just one of those speeches could just turn the tide on on a vote. I bet. Uh, so all, all I. All I wanted was the majority plus, you know, majority, and we were fortunate enough to have it. Now the hearing is Monday at nine forty-five in the Senate. That's the Senate committee. Yes. Okay, so then the Human Services Senate. Got it. Got it. So that's just like a group of nine or whatever, like a smaller group, and then it'll go to if that one passes, then it goes to the Senate floor. Now, are you going to have to get up and do some here, do like a dramatic speech, or have you already done that? I already, you know, I did that in the House, but in the Senate, I will present the bill at the hearing, oh. but I but I won't be able to give a speech on the Senate floor, but I will introduce the bill uh, Monday into the, uh, for the Senate Human gotcha. Services Committee. 
Gotcha. So how come, you know, even like Minnesota, you know, I'm watching that too. I mean, there's like, I don't know, there must be like 10 committees that they got to get through. They pass the House, but they're just all these committees. And I, I don't get it. I'm not a politician. And sadly, I'm more of a right. Let's do it right now. You know, what are we waiting for? What do you mean we want it perfect? You know, so so I can I can see that. But it's crazy how that one's going to have eight plants, you know, four flower, whatever. And it just seems like a really good one. Maybe Maybe you would say a liberal one. You know, but again, it's taken. I mean, I don't know. It seems like any given committee could just opt out and it be done. You know, OK, so here's what I'm going to say. So how come they always say good luck in the Senate, no matter where, what state you're at, even if it's federal, if you get it through the House, why are why will they say, well, good luck in the Senate? Like, that's going to be a problem. Like, why is it going to be such a problem to get it through the Senate? Because uh, generally, um, you know, House, you have twice as many members. Oh, yeah. You have a more diverse. Um, chamber and a lot more bills, you know, these type of bills would pass the House where the Senate is typically more conservative, uh-huh. um, especially socially, especially in the state of North Dakota. I know. So, uh, yeah, when they, when they say good luck, I mean, it is, <laughs> I, I, I'm just, I'm just happy that we're getting it to the Senate, but we'll see how it goes. Um, a lot of people, are, it's picking up steam that they don't want it in the Constitution. And I would say, and like I told someone else, out of the 56 people that voted for it, I would say 50 to 52 don't like marijuana at all, but they voted for it because of the constitutional issue. Well, I mean, I I hate to say that's good news, but I I hear what you're saying, and I'm picking it up. And, yeah, hopefully that'll carry through. And, again, because I don't know how to, like you yourself, you haven't consumed cannabis yourself. You may have got drunk, you know, and you and people, they'll compare that to it, you know, where you take too many and things, you know, because cannabis pretty much self-regulates. You don't take it to the limit. You know, you're not going to be on the roof with it. You're not going to get and drive all crazy after whiskey shots. And if people don't understand that, well, then they really have no idea. Like, ignorance really kind of slows this thing down because i don't know how to i mean i i've been a, i've been a drug addict you know for 20 some years i've been clean three years and so i know what's bad and what isn't you know so i don't i don't know how to get without them you know getting them in a room and forcing smoke in there to realize that it's not bad i don't know how i mean you're doing all you can is what i'm saying you know you're, you're doing all you can because if they don't know if they've never done it and they have a preconceived idea of what cannabis is about especially when you have children, you know, and that that's still being sold, although all the, you know, percentages are down in all legal states when it comes to teen use. Again, and nobody's dying. You know, that's the other thing I don't get. You know, nobody's dying. I mean, we don't have a ticker like COVID, you know, every state that legalizes, they should be going, oh, we, another one died of marijuana today, but that's not the case. You only hear about the billions of dollars in revenue that they're clocking, you know. So I, I don't see why it's a problem if nobody's dying. You know what I mean? It's kind of crude, but nobody's dying, and they keep legalizing it. Yeah, I, you know, it's hard. As, you know, the, the argument where people say, "Well, it's such," you know, you know, what it could do, people driving or whatever. Well, you never, you never. The only driving accidents you see is people that are, are that that got DUI, were drunk, and and hit, killed someone. You never see anyone under the influence of marijuana. You just no. I mean, making you, like you don't see that, but but that alcohol is still socially acceptable, right? And it creates a lot more issues, I think, than marijuana. Oh, for sure. And and again, I'm because I'm an advocate and I know about it, and I've done all the bad ones. I know that it's just I don't know how to convince somebody that we need to just because it would be a rich revenue. You know, it's there's all kinds of good reasons that nobody, especially politicians, are going to be able to see until it happens to them. But it's happening, as you say, all around. You know, nobody's slowing down. Nobody's standing up at that house going, look at Montana. There's three people dying a day in them counties. Nobody's saying that. Nobody is. Everybody's saying, hey, well, Canada's doing it now. Now they're doing it. Now they're going to do it because of revenue. But nobody talks about how come nobody dies. You know, but tobacco, they've got it on the package. You can get that anywhere. It'll cause all kinds of issues. So to me, it's kind of a double standard, you know. But again, I just want it through as quick as possible. And you seem to be the guy that's, you know, trying to make it happen. So again, I'm glad somebody's doing it that can get through you know so yeah it's good you with me 
I'm uh, still here. <laughs> I got a little got a little long there, but uh, anyway. So yeah, so House Bill. So you think that'll go into committee next week? You say? Yep, the hearing is set for next Monday at nine forty-five. Okay, so then it makes sense then that the full floor would happen next week too. Nope, it, it, they, they have uh, you know they have a deadline. I don't even know what it is for the Senate that they have to kick their bills out to go to the floor. It won't be next week. Will be the vote. It, it, I think it'll take some time. Okay, so, so now is there anything we can do as the people out here in the in the free world to uh, push it? Now, just get a hold of the uh, the senators. Yep, just get a hold of your your senator in your district and let them know the reason why you support it, and and uh, that's the most you know you know beneficial thing that people can do. Well, and it's funny because ironically, I want to do as much as I can, but I live in like Cass County, and I'll email them. They'll be like, you know, stop bugging me. We're going to vote green. You know, <laughs> like Cass County, everybody's with it. You know, I I wish I had a you know a representative that wasn't for it. But, I mean, everybody I uh, email around here, they're like, yeah, we're going to vote for it, you know. So I never really ha- have to, you know what I mean, like work on them at all. Right. Well, then you can go on to other, you know, senators that. Uh, oh. See, I, I didn't know you could you do know. that. I didn't know you could do that. I thought oh, you were yeah. supposed to just go to your own uh, district. No, you start there, and then you can go to anyone in the Senate to let them know. Got it. Views and uh, that you want them to vote for it. Got it. So, is this the first legislation that's been brought up in the history of North Dakota for cannabis legalization? I believe it is. I mean, we've had medical, right, and we've had decriminalization bills in the past, but I believe, yeah, this is the first one. Well, that's cool. So, I mean, you could, you could go down in the history books by you know spearheading it. And again, I don't know any states that were leery in the beginning. You know, they start clocking all this. They start doing like, you know, opiate use is down. You know, the youngsters aren't getting into it like they thought. Like there's always good things that come, you know, and I like North Dakota and I know you do, you know. And so people just don't understand that voting it green is a good decision for the community and and blah, 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 blah. But if they can't see it, then they won't see it until we get that way, you know, get there. So, again, I uh, I applaud your uh, tenacity, which I'm going to say one more thing. And then I'll let you go. Now, the decrim, what do you think of that? Because that got two less votes on the floor, or maybe two more. I can't remember. You probably do a nose count. But what's your uh, opinion on decrim bills? Well, I I think, you know, um, like my bill, you know, up to an ounce, you're okay. Um, 50. Yeah. I think my, my personal opinion is we have other issues that we have to give people that, that, um, you know, higher crimes. I mean, these are clogging up our court system, these, these drug, yeah. um, small drugs that's happening. And then it fills our jails and everything else. Wow. Uh, I think there should be some, so, you know, I signed on to the bill. I didn't introduce it, but de- decriminalization that representative Roars Jones introduced. Yeah. Well, I like yeah, it. Cause there's, yeah, because it, it, it costs the system so much and, you know, I'll get back to, we have all these issues with alcohol, but you don't hear, uh, you know, with, with the marijuana. Yes, there, there are studies and everything that it, it affects people, but I mean, well, for what it costs and everything right. in, in the, uh, you know, the, you know, in the court system, well, I'm I glad you can decriminalize. Yeah, and I'm glad you guys are seeing that, the ones that can make the bills, because we think, well, it's just for the money. You know, they set set people up to fail. You know, make sure that they do something that's not a real big deal till they get busted. And then it's more about a revenue, you know, an inventory. You have to pay this if you do this. And so I'm all for I I like it. I thought the decrim bill was, uh, you know, $50. Now, I, I don't know what infraction is. Is it a pay-in bill? You, do, you like pay in a fine or what? Yes, I believe it's a fine. So, yeah, I mean, so... So what, in your opinion, do you think this, uh, there's a bigger chance of that one getting through or the legalization bill, you think, through the Senate? You know, I would say the legalization probably has, I would say, even a better chance because of the fact that it, it can't go in the, you know, we don't want it to go in the Constitution. Oh, I forget. Yeah, I where, forget. Where, yeah, yeah, where people who are just socially conservative, they probably say, no, if you do drugs, you know, you need to... Right. Penalty. right. So um, you're showing this one. Look at this because this one's coming. Right. Exactly. 
Got it. Because that doesn't change like the people out there, you know, the Indy for Freedom people. That doesn't ch- change or stop them from actually being out there and doing it. You know, they can still get it through, you know. Now, it, it'll make it harder for them probably. But it seems to me like there would be either or, you know, you vote for the government and the man or you vote for the people for the people, you know. So it seems like that would be a determining factor on who would vote in the state of North Dakota. You know what I mean? But that would be more right. like a petition and a ballot, you know. So it seems to me like people would vote for that constitutional amendment just as, you know, as much as they would even if the legislation was through. But I can see where the senators and people will be more inclined. Well, anyway, Representative Jason Doctor, thanks for uh, calling. Can I talk ND here with Wilson? I appreciate it, man. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yep. no, and I'll be watching and uh, I'll be talking about it next Thursday. Well, we, I'm following it, so I'm, I'm right behind you. Whatever you're doing, I'm watching you. Okay, sounds great. Okay, see okay. you around. All thank right, you. thanks, Jason. Yep. All right, bye. Okay, well, that's that's how you do that, folks. Can I talk ND with Wilson every Thursday? Ah, it's stinking 4 o'clock, 4.20, we get in here with a big fat bag of cannabis news, and that was the uh, chief sponsor of the uh, cannabis legalization measure, House Bill 1420. As you heard, I'm going to hit the Senate next week, and then <clears throat> it looks like we, I don't know, like, and it seems to me like in a couple of weeks, we'll know if that's going to make it through. But if you listen to him talk, uh, he's pretty, you know, sounds like he knows the senators, if you know what I mean. So, uh, <laughs> I forgot to ask him how scary it is to get up in that floor and talk about people. But uh, anyway, that was a uh, good conversation that we had. I'm not going to lie. I was a little jacked up in the nerves, but, uh, you know, I did what I do, senor. This hour programming on KRFF 95.9 LPFM is being underwritten by Wild Terra. Wild Terra is an urban cidery in downtown Fargo that features locally made craft ciders with a focus on dry and experimental ciders that also serves beer, wine, and kombucha. Wild Terra is located at the corner of University and MP Avenue with lots of easy parking and a new outdoor patio, plus they're dog and family friendly. Open seven days a week. That's Wild Terra, adventurously well crafted. Kind of talking D with Wilson, KRFF 95. Point nine. So that's how we did it here in Fargo. That was Representative Jason Doctor, and uh, I mean, you you heard them. They're, they're scared. Of, they're scared by the Constitutional Amendment. Who knew? I mean, people that are in the Constitutional Amendment movement should feel pretty cool about that. And I'd like to say I I took some of that credit by being a part of the first group that made them think that this group is going to be better than the first group. Feel what I'm saying? So I, I'm taking a little pride in right now, and, and those people that are involved with, you know, Indy for Freedom should take a little pride, too, because the people that are making bills and, and movements are making movements based on your movements, and that is cool. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, RadioFreeFargo.org, you can listen to this stuff tomorrow on Kind of Talk ND, and uh, I'm going to play a little song here called what I Say? It's Ray Charles. Uh, Dr. John's going to do something. Warren Haynes, John Mayer, and then I'll be back in six minutes and 19 seconds. I got to shake out these nerves a little bit. So, y'all, how about? <laughs> Oof, the, my armpits stink. What did I say? Featuring Dr. John, Warren Haynes, John Mayer, Aaron Neville with John Schofield. That's what I say. Can of Talk ND with Wilson every Thursday, noon to three, side stage with Trav. Four to five is Can of Talk ND with Wilson. And then it's Stinky Arts Music Mart and then Locals on the 8. And that is your Thursday on KRFF 95.9 LPFM. Moorhead Fargo, 701 478 At 420, we open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And this Thursday was a humdinger. We had Representative Jason Doctor, the chief sponsor of the legalization measure, House Bill 1420, that is making its way through the system so it's made it through the the house and it's made it through the committees and so now and you heard him here he he thinks that they you know they're more likely to vote the recreational than the decrim which seems a little interesting to me and i'm not i'm not a real big thinker so i don't know why that would be but i couldn't help noticing you know when it went through the house that there was a two yes vote difference between those two so that was interesting to me so that might play out in the Senate. But uh, that was a good conversation with Representative Jason Doctor. Thanks for uh, calling Wilson. 
And this hour is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy. Becky's Body Butter is the business made with kosher, full spectrum CBD, North Dakota homegrown hemp. You can go to Odds Two Ends in West Fargo. Talk to Patty, or you can come down t- down here. Go downtown here, Tochi Products. Tell Joe Wilson sent you, and then sign the uh, petition. Uh, ND for Freedom of Cannabis Act, they got the petition there. And then when you're in Orange Records, you tell Matt Wilson said hi, and then sign it in there. So that's where we are here. Another beautiful Thursday here in Fargo. Hug your neighbor and neighbor a hug. It's the same thing. It's the dang same. But anyway, can I talk ND with Wilson every Thursday? I feel pretty good. That was that was a little nerve wracking. I don't know if anybody's ever had to do that before, but they're a little nerve wracking. My blood, my blood is like you know, I feel pretty good. It's pretty nervous, but it's interesting how I think that must be dopamine that's surfing through my my uh, my uh, something. See, I can't even talk. I can't even talk, folks. But anyway, I'm going to talk a little bit longer here. But again. Thanks to uh, Becky's Body Butter for making that. But yeah, Mexico's Chamber of Deputies approved revised marijuana legalization bill, sending it back to Senate. That's just crazy to me. And I'll just read a bunch of stuff here. Mississippi House kills alternate medical marijuana proposal, but Senate makes late attempt to revive. Top New York lawmaker says legal marijuana talks with governor reach point of screaming. Wyoming marijuana legalization bill sponsored by top Republicans expected to get hearing this week. 2021 sees Republican lawmakers take lead on marijuana legalization in more U.S. states. And Representative Jason Doctor is is no is an example. He's a Republican, but I don't like talking about that. I just talk about can I talk ND, not Paul ND. So anyway, legal marijuana states see reduced workman's comp. Uh, areas with more marijuana dispensaries have fewer opioid deaths. So anyway, what I want you to do is educate yourself and then educate others on the benefits of cannabis. You know what I'm saying? And then do your part to just change the way people feel about it because it's just there's no deaths. And I would like to hear about them, you know, let's talk about them, you know, because maybe there is risk, you know, I mean, because there's all kinds of risk with tobacco and booze. And look at that. That's, that can be procured in any, anywhere. And it was considered essential during these COVID times. But yet we fight for cannabis in states where booze and tobacco runs amok. You know? And so I wouldn't have believed till recently that it was about the money. But that's what it's about. It's about the money. There's a structure. There's a created system to suck in the money and blow the money into other people's pockets and not ours. You know, so anyway, can I talk indeed with Wilson every Thursday? It's 420 degrees here in the studio. I'm dressed appropriately. I hope you guys are too. We talk about cannabis in a positive light every Thursday. 420, we open a bag of cannabis news. Next Thursday is going to be no different. So come on back here. Learn a little something about cannabis while you're out there. Because like I was telling Jason Doctor, ignorance can slow things down. If you just don't know, then you don't know. But the more you learn... The greasier the wheel squeaks. All right. So anyway, you guys be good to yourself. I'm out of here. David Allen Judgment Day. Peace.